watching the Forefront Church video podcast. And wherever you're at viewing online, we just want to say thank you and welcome. And one of the ways that we can help connect with you is we want to hear from you and where you're at and how we can help. And so head over to ForefrontChurch.info after the message and click the Connect tab. It's a great way for us to help you along your spiritual journey as you connect with God and learn about Jesus. And so sit back, relax. We hope that you're challenged and encouraged from today's message. Right, 10 a.m. We doing okay today? Yeah. All right. And for all you guys watching online, welcome. You're missing out because everyone here has a tennis ball. No, those are not to throw at me during service if you don't like the message. Uh, we had a few of those questions. We're like, can I throw this adjacent? No, you cannot. And if you're a Redskins fan, you wouldn't hit me anyways. So <laughs> thank you very much. I cannot wait for this year's NFL season. Go New York football giants. And so I'm excited for today as we start a brand new series called Legacy, but I want to give you a little bit of background, whether you're brand new with us, whether you've been with us for a while, there is a method to the madness. Not only are you getting a tennis ball today, those of you guys who are watching online, you get a tennis ball emoji, uh, but as we walk through this, I want to give you a little bit of background about where we've been this summer, about why we're here today. You see, when we started out the summer, and first off, if you have a Bible, I want you to go ahead and turn over to Mark chapter 12. If you don't have an easy to read translation of the Bible, our guy that rides the, runs the slides will be able to do that because this clicker is not working this morning. If you don't have a Bible, you can head over to ForefrontChurch.info and get all the notes there. You can just swipe on over, or you could go to the Get Connected table and be a part of that as well, and just pick up a brand new Bible. It's yours to keep, and all those things you guys watching online can head over there to Forefront church.info. Mark chapter 12 is where we're going to be. And to give you a little background, at the beginning of the summer, as we were walking through this, one of the first places that we went was a series called I Love the 90s. How many of you guys are here with us during that series? Yeah. And so we opened up with a bunch of 90s songs. We sat through Psalm 90 through 99, diving into those. And what we wanted to do was look at and, and really dive into what does it mean to connect to the heart of of a man, to the heart of a woman, and God to reach into our lives and begin to change us foundationally in the way that we, that we feel empathy and love and caring for one another. And so we spent a handful of weeks there, but we didn't want to stop there, which is why we got into the next series called Rebuild, where we said, you know what? We want to look at the mind. And then over in Proverbs, we sat there and looked at how do we make decisions? How do we tear down what we may think we know about faith? Because it, especially for myself, when I came to faith, I'm very analytical. I did, my parents drug me to church, but I didn't believe in God. And so I was very like, science is here, Bible's way over here. There's no way they could collide. And over time, what I learned is there's a lot more that they foundationally share together. But how do we build that back up in such a way that when we make Make decisions, when we honor people, when we go to our job, when we interact with our neighbors, how are we honoring them well? And so we started out with the heart. We started looking at the mind and working through that. And all of these, you could go back on our website and through our .info page and click on messages and listen and watch back on these pieces. And so we decided, you know what, we want to keep moving. And we got to legacy, the very soul of a man, the very soul of a woman. What does it mean to leave something greater than ourselves? And that's what we're going to be in the next four weeks. And not only, I'm going to be preaching the first three, uh, but we have a special guest that's going to be for our fourth week. Uh, his name's Caleb Kaltenbach. He wrote a book called Messy Grace and uh, just recently got up tomorrow. Uh, he has become a, a very uh, close friend. And so I'm thankful that he's going to be in town and preaching that last week. And uh, you will not want to miss that, especially uh, because he is just uh, going to guide us through what does it look like to live in uh, a world that's kind of all over the place 
place and how do we follow that God into the future to leave a legacy? And so I want to pray for us and then we're going to keep rolling. Why don't you pray with me? God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your church. We are truly, we're truly trying to seek you. And all of us are at different places in faith, but we want to honor you with all that we are. God, thank you for loving us and caring for us. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray this morning. Amen. So you guys have that tennis ball. You can kind of pick that up in your hand. Hold on to that. Uh, Don't throw it at a friend. We're going to be revisiting this a little bit and guiding us through this journey. You see, this tennis ball led me down a road about what it meant to live a legacy. You see, we all have legacy moments where we question things. Uh, Maybe for you, it was when you went off to college and you kind of had that night right before classes where you're just laying in bed and you're like, oh my goodness, I am going to like go to classes. I don't want to flunk. Maybe mom or dad or a family member had paid for those classes. I just didn't want to ruin my opportunity because I was paying for it all by myself and I did not want to fail. And I was like, how is this going to lead into the future and live a legacy? And then, well, it didn't stop there. I remember my first real job. How many of you guys remember your first big boy, big girl job? Yeah, not like your 16-year-old paper route or McDonald's job. Like, I'm talking like the very first one. Like, you're like, oh, I'm making, I'm kind of doing, I'm really doing this. I remember the night before I was getting ready to go into my first real ministry job. And I was like, I don't want to fail. I got like college loans to pay forever. And I just got, I can't, this has got to work. This has got, I got to figure this out. And what is this going to do into the future? How will I help others as this goes on? And then as I went through ministry, I met a girl and I was like, man, that girl's cute. And then I found out she loved Jesus. I was like, check, that's another box. And we kept moving along. I'm like, man, I want to marry her. And so I planned in the night before I proposed, I could not sleep. I'm like, hopefully she says yes, or this is, I don't know what to do. I'll just crawl into a hole and die, and I don't know. Like, I just didn't know what was going on because I felt like our lives together would lead to something greater. And then I came to Forefront, and I was like, man, I feel like I have this this following God thing. I feel like I'm doing okay with that. I'm not perfect at it by any means. And I I feel like my family's doing well. We had just had our second child uh, during the early days of us coming to forefront. And I had taken on the role. This is about eight years, eight, nine years ago uh, when I took on the role of the lead pastor here. And to put it very short and sweet, things weren't great that I inherited. Things were a little bit messy. And so one of the ways that I think when I'm kind of going about stuff is I will grab a tennis ball around our house and I will just bounce it around. My daughters hate it. It annoys them. Can I have your ball? No, it's my ball. Step off. And I'll just walk around the house and I will bounce the ball. And I am, it helps me think. If you've ever seen A Few Good Men, the scene with uh, Tom Cruise, he's like, I need my bat. I need my bat. Where's my bat? And they're like, you're out of control. Grabs the bat and he's like, oh, I have the answer. He's like, thinks better with the bat. I think better with the ball. And so I will bounce this around. I'm thinking to myself, God, I I was 28 years old at the time. Uh, This October, it will be a decade in this. And at the time, and here's a little secret. If you're not an adult yet, you're a middle school, high school, you're watching online, adults, they have no idea what they're doing. Okay, like we play, we're all there. That's like the biggest like kept secret is adults. We get a new face. We have no idea what we're doing. We question other adults. We sit around. We're like, hey, does that work for you? All right. We trial and error. We throw at the wall, see if it sticks. We have no idea. And so I'm in this new role and I'm bouncing this ball around trying to figure out, God, how are you going to forget family, this and that? Like, I feel like I'm doing that well, but with the church, How can we leave a legacy in our community? And as I'm bouncing this thing around, I, and I'm a little clumsy, okay? I'm mildly accident prone. And so I'm walking down the hallway and I bounce the ball. And you ever had a moment where you bounced a ball, but it didn't go the way you anticipated? I throw it down. It hits my foot off the baseboard, pops back up. It's a tennis ball. It's not like a death ball. Like it pops up and I like jump back. Like somehow it's going to kill me, which is so dumb. Like it bounces up, but I lose my balance. And so as I lose my balance in the hallway, I fall backwards and crack my head open on the doorway to our guest room. And immediately I think, I get up and I go to the bathroom and I look and I go, I don't want my wife to know how clumsy I am. 
So I see that there's makeup in there. I'm like, try to stop the blood. Let's try to cover it up and all these things, which I did a terrible job, by the way. She woke up. She's like, not only did you hit your head, but what did you do? Like, it was just a mess. So ladies, whatever you do with the makeup, wow. And so I I tried to cover it up because I didn't want her to know. But as I'm in the bathroom and I'm doing all this stuff, I was like, man, I can't wait. And this is where my brain kind of moves. I mean, God, it'll be great one day when, when, when heaven is here and we don't have to worry about pain and hurt and all these things as I'm tending to the wound, debating stitches and those type things. And so I'm like, but this thing kind of hits me. And it's almost, if you have ever truly said, God, I want to dig in and ask the hard questions. If you're asking the hard questions and you truly want a response from God, over time, you will begin to get push back from God in responses to that. It's just going to happen over time. And as I kind of do this, I kind of feel this pushback from God. Like, why are you going to wait till heaven? You were, you were made for right now. You were made for more right now. And I want to encourage you that you and I, we are made for more. And so what I decided to do, I was like, God, why? you're right. Why am I going to wait for heaven? Like we have right now that we can leave a legacy. And so I go into our guest room and I'm pulling out books and I'm reading and I'm doing all these things and trying to figure out, all right, God, what is it about? And I'm doing study about legacy. And I'm led to a bunch of different passages, but one in particular over in Mark chapter 12, which is where you guys are holding out. It'll be here on the screen. Starting in verse 28, it says, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? What he's really asking is, All right, Jesus, if we're going to do this, if we're going to follow you, and all of this is supposed to be, what, what should we really be about? Really the question under the question is, Jesus, What's really the, what's the meaning of life? What, what should we be doing as human beings? What's going to be our legacy? And Jesus, inviting questions, loving questions. If you are filled with questions, Jesus wants to hear them. It says, the most important one, answer Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. He continues on in verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, which is what we foundationally been walking through the entire summer. But then he follows it up. He says, and the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Now we kind of pause there because when I was walking through this kind of legacy moment, bouncing the ball around, trying to understand this, I felt like I got that first part Felt like I had it pretty down pat. But then I thought about our church as a whole. I thought, God, love your neighbor as yourself. If that's what the, this purpose is, where are we going to go from here to really leave a legacy, to really care for others? And the question that I asked myself is who's my neighbor? Who are those people? Because God, I feel like I'm trying to understand you more, but what does it mean to really love my neighbor? And this wasn't the only time that this question's been asked. Plenty of people have asked Jesus similar type questions about who do we love? Who do we care for? Who is our neighbor? And one in particular in the New Testament, the book of Luke chapter 10, there was a lawyer who saw this kind of interaction. He heard, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. The next was like it, love your neighbor. And like a lawyer would, he goes, so who's my neighbor? Which if we have any lawyers in here, we love you. Any lawyers watching online, love you. But it would, I understand why a lawyer would ask this. I need some black and white answers, Jesus. And if you're anything like me, I kind of like black and white answers too. Kind of like, this is the way we go. This is the way we don't. Jesus, tell me what to do. And the more that you interact with Jesus, the more that you'll learn that Jesus is a lot more gray than he is black and white. Go love people. What does that mean? Go love people. Well, how do I do that? Go love people. I need an agenda, Jesus. Go love people. I need the sticky notes. I need to put it in my to-do app and I need to be able to have the reminders, go love people. (sighs) And so Jesus has asked this question. And so he begins to share a story says, well, there was this one, and I love the way Jesus shares this. So there was this gentleman that was walking along the road one day, and he came upon some robbers, this Jewish man. And as the robbers came upon him, they robbed him, took everything, beat him, left him for dead. 
And so in light of this, the crowd kind of gathers in any time that Jesus would share stories. And as they gather, and he said, so there were some people that walked by. First, there was a priest. And I imagine the whole crowd's like, here we go. He's going to get hooked up. He's going to get saved. And so the priest walks by and looking at him going, this is unclean. Because priests during that time would not want to touch anyone, anything that would defile them in their worship. So they kind of look and they go, no, I'm good. Which shouldn't be the way that they would act. But that's what happened. They walk on by. And so everybody's kind of like, where is he going with this story? Well, next comes by this Levite, and he sees the man, and they think, oh, surely, you know, that, that he would stop. And sure enough, he looks at him and goes, oh, no, I'm good, and continues to travel along. Well, then they get to a place where he mentions the third person. You see, this was a Jewish man who was traveling, and he said there was a Samaritan man. I goes, oh, he's going to walk by too. Because there was some turmoil between the Jews and the people of Samaria during that time. It would be like today going onto Facebook and starting a political debate. How's that going to work out? What it divides and everyone, I'm going to be over here, I'm going to be over here. It was like that ramped up times 10 between the Jews and Samaritans. And so people are going, surely this man isn't going to stop for this Jewish person. And as Jesus continues on, he says, the Samaritan stopped, saw that the man was hurting, not looking at him based on his culture, based on his upbringing, helps tend to his wounds, and not just there, travels to the next town, brings him to the inn, pays for him to be cared for, lets the innkeeper know if there's any more expenses as he's traveling back through that he will help with them. And then Jesus stops as the crowd's drawn in. So, who, uh, who's his neighbor? I love that Jesus usually asks, as people ask him questions, he answers them with more questions. Because he's not just going to give us the pat answer. And this is what the expert of the law replied. The one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. If you and I want to leave a legacy, it has to be foundationally led, heart, mind, and soul, by loving our fellow man. And if you don't get anything else, my hope is that you would get this, that you would hold on to this. This is our main idea for the week, that the more love you give away, the more love you experience. Because I meet people that go, I don't feel like, quite honestly, that my life is all that loving. I don't experience that. I experience people that are hurting, people that are mean, people have wounded me. And I go, well, how much have you actually loved others? They go, I don't like people people have hurt me. And I go, well, that's part of the problem. If you've ever said the words, I don't really like people, and you seem a bit uh, cranky, your life is fairly tumultuous, you come across people constantly that hurt you, you're looking for the worst, you're giving out the worst, and what's going to end up happening, you're going to experience the worst. And instead what Jesus turns around and says, listen, there are going to be people that hurt you. There are going to be people that make fun of you. There's going to be people that you don't even like. That they voted for so-and-so and you voted for so-and-so. And you go, oh, I'm not going to do that. And he goes, I don't care how you voted. I don't care what their skin tone is. I don't care where they came from. I don't care if they believe something completely opposite of you. Will you get down and care for others? Because it's not how you vote or what you say that leaves a legacy, but how you live and ultimately how you love. The more love you give away, the more love you'll experience. But here's why I know why people have a hard time with this. You see, loving your neighbor is terribly difficult if you haven't found love for yourself. Constantly, I will meet with people and they'll say, I don't really love myself very much. We were uh, sitting, uh, my wife goes with ladies during the beach days on Fridays and I show up because I'm the token lifeguard guy for all the children. And I was listening to the conversation that was taking place and one of the people that was sitting on the beach shared like, yeah, I went to this women's conference and they had everybody fill out a piece of paper and talking about things. And so it was a, a, a women's conference and they were filling out questions and then they passed the papers all around. So nobody knew whose answers they were. And one of the questions was, if you hate the way you look and feel, check the box. And as they passed it around, they asked that question in a women's conference, hundreds and hundreds of women, and over 90% of the room stood up when they asked the question, if you have a sheet that's marked that, please stand. 
we have foundationally a problem about how we love and look at ourselves in light of how God designed us. And Mike Foster, he's a, an author and writer, speaker, um, and, and started a group called People of the Second Chance. He puts it this way. He says, the creator celebrates broken things as a way to love us. And this, my friend, is also what he invites us to do. You see, we are all have different facets of cracks and brokenness in our lives. And I would put it this way, that broken things can be made beautiful again. That if you and I want to live a life that leaves a legacy, then we have to come to terms with a couple things. First, that all of our lives have brokenness in them. And the only way that we can share and extend love is if we recognize it, give it to the one who created us and can make us new and make broken things beautiful again and then go, God, I've experienced your love. And I can then in turn go to other people or as we would say in today's message, the more love you give away, the more love you will experience. Going back to that ball. So for a couple months, I was bouncing the ball around my house, annoying my entire family. It's the only thing I get to do well. And I'm bouncing the ball around. I'm doing my thing and I'm processing this. And I'm wondering, how do we leave a legacy? I've been studying, I've been reading. And I turn on, I'm bouncing the ball one day. It's a couple months later and I turn on the news. And one of the news stories that's there is sharing about how across the Commonwealth of Virginia, there are school systems that are debating what to do about, they can only do one of two things. Either they can help these regions where they have kids that are becoming pregnant in the school system that they need to be able to help. They have kids that are having difficulties because they're homeless and they're going from place to place to place and they don't do this. Or a lot of the school systems are having trouble with buses. And so they needed to make a choice. And almost unanimously across the Commonwealth, the school boards were voting for buses instead of helping kids. Now, I know it's very complicated. Before you email me and say, Jason, there's only so much money to go around, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, overwhelmingly, the Commonwealth chose transportation over helping kids. So I'm sitting there watching. I remember holding the ball in my hand. I was looking at it, thinking about legacy. I go, this is where, this is where Forefront has to, not could, has to make a difference. But if you know anything about schools, you know that churches aren't really invited in. You can't show up to a school and walk up to the front desk and go, hi, I'm from a church. They go, come on in. Usually they go, excuse me? Uh, you're, you're not, we love you, but, but not here. And so they kind of push people off. And well, I was like, something has to change. And so I drew, as I'm reading uh, more, I get online, I'm doing the, you know, looking through these articles, and I'm seeing this. I draw a little house on this tennis ball like something has to change and we cannot stay like this any longer because there are kids who need a place to feel like home and feel like they're valued and if the church doesn't respond then shame on the local church and so two just a few weeks later um, after I had bought up all the domain names and made sure everything was good um, I called a bunch of friends who I knew really loved others to sit down, we were meeting at Ocean Lakes High School and we met in the cafeteria around a long uh, cafeteria table. I said, hey, I have this idea for this organization called Aid Now because they won't let the church in, but they'll let an organization in and, and we need to make a difference or people are, are going to suffer. He said, and by the way, I can't run it. Why can't you run it? It's your idea. I'm like, I can't run it. You gotta run it. I got a family. I got this church thing going on. It was, which was still a little chaotic at the time. Do you guys want to do this? And every one of them sitting at the table say, yeah. And since that time, after just a few years, 1,300 plus kids here in Hampton Roads in Virginia Beach who are in the, in the system dealing with homelessness have now been forever changed because people made a difference starting right here through Forefront Church. I was like, man, that's how you change a city and leave a legacy. We're partnering with them. You heard it in the announcement video, and it's at our ForefrontChurch.info page where you can go on there and scroll, be there, and you can sign up to be a part. That you can, over the next two weeks, don't show up empty-handed. Bring some new underwear. I know you're going to go out and shop for all the things at Target. Pick up some underwear and bring them with you. 
because we want not a single kid, socks and underwear are the biggest thing, and we dedicated that we're going to do that, we're going to cover that, that every kid, hundreds of them, will get brand new underwear. None of us or our kids are worrying about that, but they are. But it cannot stop there because you see, you and I have to leave a legacy greater and it's past just simply that. When you leave, you're gonna get a card that shares all about this. My hope in prayer is that you will do something because we are called as believers in Jesus. And if you're here, that means you at least wanna explore the possibility that God has more in store for your life. And if we're gonna do that, we must leave a legacy because the more love you give away, the more love you'll experience. And that is how you leave a legacy. But we are not going to stop there. I want you to take out that tennis ball for a moment. We're going to change things up. Normally in a service, it's it's more um, participatory during the songs and more of a monologue during the message. But I want more for you, and so does God. And if you're watching online, you can grab a, a piece of paper uh, you know, around you. Maybe your note's part of your app. Uh, they are on your phone. But each of you guys have a tennis ball, and there's stations up front right over here, and then there's stations in back, and they have Sharpies on them. You see, on my ball, it has the city of Virginia Beach outlined with a little heart on it because I want more for our city. I want every single kid and every single family in our city to have a home and to be impacted. I drew my family because I need better for my family. It needs to start at home. I need to guide them and direct them to what it means to love people. You hear there's a couple examples that'll be on the screen. Maybe for you, you've never made a decision. It needs to start with Jesus because Jesus is the foundation of love. Yes, you may have experienced love. Yes, you may have given love, but I can tell you that it is not at the level that it can be when you have Jesus in your life. And you may have questions, you may have that, but maybe for you, that's it. Maybe for you, you just want to say, you know what, I want to love others, and that's going to start here at Forefront Church. Maybe you, you draw a little home and say, you know what, I'm going to commit to serving the homeless through aid now, and I'm going to make sure that I bring carts and carts of underwear, and I'm going to show up, and I'm going to serve. But maybe you want to love people in the community, but you need to forgive somebody. You need to write their name down. Maybe the name of somebody that needs your love and patience someone who needs your grace, your family, maybe even our entire city. Brand's going to play, and we're going to give you a moment to get up, move around the room, use the markers, hang out wherever you feel led. But every single one of us has the capacity to leave a greater legacy. And instead of just bouncing it around, thinking about what we're going to do, praying about it, hoping about it, dragging our feet, that we will commit to something more. We're going to give you some time to do that. As Brandon plays, you can move freely to the stations and take some time to do that as you feel led now. Thanks for tuning in to the Forefront Church video podcast. Our hope and prayer is that this has left you encouraged and challenged you in your faith. And you might have some questions and some ways that you want to figure this out. And we want to help with that. Head over to ForefrontChurch.info and there's a couple different ways that you can connect. Click the connect tab and let us know how we can be praying for you or a staff member can be contacting you this week. Maybe you have just been encouraged by this and want to support the ministry here at Forefront Church. You can click the giving tab as well as other tabs that are in there to help you along in your journey with God. And so we're thankful for you. Thanks for tuning in. And we cannot wait to see you again here online on the video podcast. We love you and we'll see you then. Peace.